Okay, we're going to start over here on the Home tab. Again, what we're going to start by doing is trying to create a building section. So what I will do is switch over to the View tab. I'll go to the Section tool, and I'll draw a section. I'm going to draw the section pretty carefully because I have a specific place I'm trying to reach, which is right about here. Okay. Once I've gone ahead and adjust, or created the section, what I need to do is actually just oh, adjust the depth of the far clipping plane. So let me pull that in, because I want to have a section that really cuts a very narrow path. I don't want to see an awful lot of stuff that's back in the background. Once I've created that section, I can either go over here. In fact, let me do that. I'll come over into the project browser. And I'll rename it here. I'll right click on it. Then I can double click it to open it over there and take a look at it. Okay. Once I'm over here, there's a couple different things I want to do to adjust the section to make it look a little bit better. One thing that's happening is all the uh, furniture and the casework and the plumbing, all that stuff is showing right now. So what I'm going to do is actually go to the visibility graphics and I'm going to actually turn off the furniture, the casework and the plumbing objects, just so they're not cluttering up the view. Another thing we're going to do is I'm going to go through and adjust the level of detail. Currently it's its course. I'm going to set it to fine so I can see a lot more line detail. And I'm also going to go through and adjust the display style so it's shaded. Now, having set all these things, what I want to do is actually create a view template so that I don't have to keep on doing this for all my building sections. So what I'll do is I'll come up here to the view templates and I'll say create a template from the current view. I'll just go ahead and call that building sections. It'll open the dialog so I can take a look at how the different settings are set. But it has the shaded, it has the scale that I want, it has the level of detail I want. So I'm going to just say OK and accept that. The next step in the whole process is we're going to go through and just add in components, detail components, to represent some of the key members that are in the view. And to do that, I'm going to zoom on in to one of the critical junctions at the second floor level. And I'm going to start adding in components that represent the key framing elements in the wall and in the floor system. So what I'm going to do is go to the Annotate tab. And under the Annotate tab, oh, I'm in Model Detail Component, that's fine. What I can go down here is in the Type Selector, I'm going to go through and choose, oh, some of the big beams which are at the floor and wall intersections, are 6 by 12s And I'm going to go ahead and move that right into place and drop it right there. There's going to be a similar one of these over on the other side. Actually, it's right there. Next, we're going to go ahead and put at the very far right a 6x10. So what I'm going to do is go to the Type Selector and choose something a little smaller. Again, this is just a beam that's at the top of the wall supporting the second floor. So I can put that in here. And if I want to, I can adjust my zoom. Just really make sure that I got it in the right place. If it looks like it's a little bit off, I might want to do an align to it. Align. And I'll choose that. Then I'll choose the edge of that and really make sure they're together. I could even lock them together to make sure they stay put. Great. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and put in here are actually the eye joists at the second floor level. So what those look like, they're another detail component. I'm going to go through and zoom on in. I'll go back to oh, the Annotate tab. And under Detail Components, I'll look for down in the list. There are eye joists. And I'm going to go ahead and choose this one. I can put it in here. I'm going to put it about one foot four away from the wall. What I'm going to do now is, rather than continuing to copy that, I'm going to zoom out a few times. What I'm going to do is actually array that, because they're all at a very regular spacing. So I can say Array. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and leave them grouped and associated. I'm going to do the second one, and I will move on over from here. I'll put the second one at one foot four. And then I can put in the total number of them that I want in there. I happen to know there's actually 19 of them necessary to fill out the space. OK, 
except by doing that I sort of populated the entire floor space. What I'm going to do now is put these same sort of framing elements up at the roof level. Go to the detail components. Again, I should probably do the align to make sure that I got that in the right location. So align from the grid line to the edge over there. That looks like it actually was right. I'll do detail component. I'm going to pull on down and I'm going to use 2 by 8s as the ceiling framing. I'll put that in at 1 foot 4 over. Zoom on out. And then I'll do a similar sort of array operation. I'm going to array here. I'm going to pull over one foot four again. Okay, and this time I believe there need to be 20 of them. And I'll also go back in and put a detail component. Again, that's six by eight. Back over here. Okay, let's zoom on out. Now, the whole roof framing system has been completed. Now what we need to do is go through and just put in the wall framing. So let me show you what that looks like. What we're going to do is just put in, it's really sill plates and headers at each of the different wall intersections. And what I need to do is just zoom on in. We'll start down here in the corner. And it's actually sort of very easy thing to do if you copy and paste them around. So I'll say detail components. I will choose the two by six. It comes in vertically. I'll space bar it, drop it in there. Actually, this is a pretty good time to show something about thin line views. Let me turn that on because that'll actually help. When these lines are really fat, you can't see what's going on. You can turn on thin line views and then you can sort of see in real detail what's happening here. Aligning this to this and that to that. Let me zoom on out. What I want to do is actually do something very similar up at the top of the wall. So to do that, what I'm going to do is, again, I'll zoom in, go back and get my detail component, rotate it, and place it here. At the top of the wall, there's actually two of them. So what I tend to do is I'll actually copy, grab the upper corner, and just copy it down like that. In the same sort of sense, I can take this one and copy it. I'll copy it up to the floor level above. And I'll really just go ahead and do a similar thing for each of the different walls. So in the same sense over here, I copy. I put two of these sill plates underneath the window. And I keep on scrolling up the wall. I'll do something similar there. I'll put two of those. Okay, since I want to basically copy those two things up, what I can do is just grab them here, control click them here, and then I can use the copy. And now I can bring that on up. And I can put that at the top of the wall. I can also go ahead and copy that here. Having put those things in, let me zoom on out. What I'm going to do is actually just do something very similar to the other side of the wall. Once we've gone ahead and placed the elements on one wall, what I can do is grab one, Let's go ahead and start it from this view. If we zoom into here and we see those top plates and they're on this side over here, it's actually quite useful since you've placed them once to go ahead and just copy them. And what I can do is again just choose a good reference point and come on over to this side and just place a whole bunch at once. Okay, that just makes it pretty easy. I'm going to go through and say that we're going to do another annotation, adding these text labels. I'll choose the text tool, and I'll choose the format. And what I want to do is have this two-legged leader, is what they call it. I'll leave it left justified. That'll be fine. And what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit closer, put a label on here, which explains what those ceiling joists are. We'll say those are two by eight joists. And in the same sense, 
I'm going to put a label on these TGI joists, or these I joists right down here, as they're called. I'm going to call the, these are 11 and 7 8 inch I joists on center. In this section, we're going to learn how to create a wall section as opposed to the overall building section. So for the wall section view, what we're going to do is just focus on this one wall over here on the left-hand side of the building section. So to create that, what I'm going to do is go to the view. I'm going to choose the Callout tool. And then before I actually create it, let me go through and just set the size that I want it to be. And half inch to a foot is just going to be fine. I'm also not going to reference another view. I'm going to create a brand new callout. And what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do that is I'll just drag around like this. That's fine. That'll actually create the view. So if I come on down, you'll actually see we have this callout of the building section. And I can go through and rename that. I'm going to call this wall section type A, one of our primary wall types. Back over here, where the callout is made, let me choose the callout. And what I'm going to do is actually just pull the tag over just to another location because it was sort of buried in there. I want to be able to see it when I place it on the sheets. So I'll go ahead and put it over there on that side instead. Then I'll switch on over to the wall section itself and we'll go ahead and take a look at this. I can adjust the cropping a little bit. I'm going to bring that in just a little bit closer. So I'm really just focusing on the wall and not the ex external things. Oh, and I'm also going to go through and let me do this. Because I've cropped it so close, these tags are showing up just a little bit close to where I want them to be. So I'm going to pull them out just a little bit. Again, this is just making some graphical room to kind of clean up the view so I have some room to put my text. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually place all the detail items like I had placed in the prior view, but they haven't been copied in here. So what I'm going to do is actually go back over to the building section. What I'll do is I'll do a drag select. I'm going to make sure that I just get the ones in that wall, not the air raid ones. They'll kind of create troubles for me. And once I've done that, I'm going to filter them just to get the detail items. That'll grab just those pieces that I've already put in there. And the idea is that really once I've gone ahead and created all that stuff in the other view, there's no reason for me to have to do this again. So I'm going to copy those to the clipboard. I'll come over to the wall section, and what I can do here is actually say paste, and I'm going to say into the current view, align to the current view, and that'll actually put them in there, saving me all the work of having to put all that stuff back in there. Once I've gone through and done that, I can still go ahead and, oh, I'm going to add back in a few of those arrayed items, put the detail components in, put those eye joists in. Again, the only real reason I did it that way, as opposed to trying to copy them, is just because they were arrayed, it was going to be a little bit of a pain to go through and do that. So I'll copy those over. Again, just filling in a little bit of the detail. What I'm really trying to focus on more than anything is just the wall itself. The purpose of creating the wall section is add some notes to this thing so that it actually explains the details of the wall assembly. We'll again use our text tool, two-step leader. And I'll go ahead and uh, still have it aligned to the left. And it, that wall assembly is going to be made up of half inch of a gypsum wall board. The next layer of the wall assembly is one half inch CDX plywood sheathing. That's followed by some grade D building paper. And the final layer, this is going to be seven eighth inch stucco. Okay. And that actually describes all the pieces that are part of the wall assembly. Now I can go through. What happened right here is it went through and it hid those things from us. It gave me that warning. The view properties are actually set so that it's cropping out the annotations. And since my annotations were hanging out side of the crop, it went ahead and hid those. So what I have to do is take a look at the view properties. And we'll switch on down. There's this thing that actually says annotation crop. And if I turn that off, and apply it. Okay, we'll come back in. The reason being that the annotation was hanging outside the crop boundary. I'm going to click in front of wall assembly. I'll click after that part there, and I'm going to bold face that just because I want that to look a little bit better. Let me zoom on out. So the final step in tutorial one is we're going to place these on sheets. What I'm going to do is go to the sheet that's been set aside for building and wall sections. And once I have that, 
I can take my building section. I'll drag it into the sheet. I'm also going to take that wall section and I'm going to drag it into the sheet. I'll put it right over here on the right hand side. And now let's zoom in and kind of see what happened. Notice that what happens is the call out to the building section is currently showing that it's at 2S1. And what that's referring to, let me zoom on out, is the fact that the section itself over here has been played as section two. So we get this interrelationship between the callout tags and where things actually got placed. Since this is two on sheet S1, the callout tag is showing the same thing. And that keeps all our drawings and our views cross-referenced. I'll go back over to the building section here and show you that that also works in a live sense in that if I come over here and I'm in the live view, if I double click on that tag, it'll take me.